कमिंग फ्रॉम द मनी मार्केट हमने इन दोनों मार्केट्स को बेसिक बेसिक आप डिस्कस कर लिया है इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स सो आई एस टॉक्स अबाउट गुड्स मार्केट हेयर द इक्विलिब्रियम इज अचीव वेन एग्रीगेट डिमांड इज इक्वल टू द आउटपुट प्रोड्यूस्ड एग्रीगेट डिमांड इज सी प्लस आई प्लस जी प्लस एन एक्स On the other hand, liquid money, liquidity market or money market, this equilibrium is achieved when money supply is equal to money demand. So, money demand को हमने बोला है liquidity preference. So, this is our So this is our liquidity preference. Okay, how much money I wish to hold given the interest rate and the income that I have. So money is demanded for several reasons. It is used for transactions. It is used for any precautionary measure, or it is used for. speculation right when i talk about the transaction demand of money it is directly related with income precautionary method also can be somewhat related to income but it is it is some it is in some sense how much money you want to hold for any op, un, unforeseen thing that may come in the future how much money you want to hold for that so this is that this is that money demand this is something which was not introduced in the classical method but it is a part of the keynes model okay speculative motive says if the interest rate is going to increase in the future you would want to hold the money today and wait for the correct time to put that money in bonds on the other hand if you are getting very high interest rates today you will part from your liquidity preference if you have that loose money with you you know it gives you some kind of a convenience you can uh, any time you can make the transactions without any hassle so this liquidity preference you will let go this liquidity preference if you have a higher interest rate that you can earn outside so this speculation motive of money demand is dependent on the interest rates with income there's a positive relationship and with interest rates there is a negative relationship with of money demand so this is something that we have discussed so far in the goods market we also discussed about the money multiplier the government expenditure multiplier what happens when the government increases uh, government expenditure then what what is the relationship of that on uh, on the total aggregate demand and output we have discussed all these points in the previous lectures now what we are going to understand is in the islm analysis those levels of interest rate and income such that the money market and the goods market are simultaneously in equilibrium so these are those combinations of interest rate and income such that the money market here and the goods market here they are simultaneously in equilibrium okay so from where so how so we we, uh, we know that we are going to determine income in the goods market is interest rate dependent on uh, is interest rate coming in this goods market what will change if the interest rate if the interest rate is changing here which factor will change if the interest rate changes investment when the investment changes income would change what will change here when the income changes money demand money supply being so these two concepts are interrelated to each other goods market will have certain components which will impact the money market and the money market will have certain con co uh, components which will impact the goods market so what we will do is first we will look at is and lm separately and then we'll bring it together so let me uh, derive is curve here and i derive lm curve here so that you can see both the things together 
and then we'll bring them on one graph fine so this is precisely what we'll do so let's start with the is curve so is again as i told you it is investment savings it gives you all those combinations of interest rate and income such that the goods market is in equilibrium is is investment savings jab hamara investments or savings equal hoga hamara goods market equilibrium mein hota hai right so we know that output is equal to c plus i plus g plus nx this is not the case always this will happen only in equilibrium right this is my total output this is my aggregate demand when the two things are equal to each other the goods market will be in equilibrium if they are not equal to each other the goods market will not be in equilibrium so then what we had done we had expanded these curves we had some expansion of the consumption function then we brought in government and we have done that whole analysis previously so i'm not going to repeat that so what we can write this as c bar plus c disposable income let me write disposable income here plus i bar plus g bar plus nx bar this is what we had done in the last class and what is disposable income disposable income is income minus any tax that you pay out of this income plus any transfer that you receive from this income so all these things we have covered last time now we are going to make one more change so this girl had correctly pointed out that if the interest rate is changing one very important component that would change would would be the investment right so we are now just going to expand this investment function in this form so investment is given by i bar minus bi so this is my investment function this is that i bar component that we had always talked about and now we bring in some notion of the inverse relationship between investment and interest rate this b gives me the responsiveness of investment towards the interest rates so there are two things if you had done your demand analysis previously if the price increases demand would demand is going to decrease but how much what is the responsiveness analogically that concept and this concept are same so b will tell you how responsive is your investment towards interest rates so let me write it here because these points will be used later on right so let me write this here so b tells me how responsive is investment towards interest rates 